This is Nick Nielsen, Mad Scientist of Muscle, and what I've got for you today is a little homemade training equipment. Now this is a homemade yoke bar uh, made out of plumbing pipe that I just got at the hardware store. I'm using this for uh, Anderson squats, which is basically a bottom start squat. Now what I've done here is a couple of cross beams, actually one cross beam, two regular posts, T-junction at the bottom, and uh, this I'll actually give you a close up here so you can see what it's all about. But um, basically what this does is allows these here to move freely so they're not locked in so you get a lot of stabilizing work and it, uh, as you're doing the exercise it kind of shifts the focus more towards the quads I find where with a regular bar because it's sitting and fixed on your back that kind of shifts the focus a little bit more back when you're coming down with this the weight kind of comes forward a little bit so the focus does rest on the quads quite a bit more so um, let me give you a quick uh, close-up demonstration here the tour. Here is the bottom piece where the weights are. As you can see, I've got this is a one and a, I think it's yeah one and a quarter inch pipe right here. This vertical pipe right here, and that's a T junction, and then just two shorter vertical pipes, um, one and a quarter inch pipes right there. So this junction here is one and a quarter, and these two pipes are one and a quarter. And you want to make sure that you're balancing these loads evenly as well. Now, here is the actual bar part of it. What I've got here is this slides freely. So this is another T-junction, but the bar itself that you're using on your back for squatting, that actually spins and rotates. That's not fixed here. This goes right through this one and a quarter piece. And there's another, um, as you can see, or another extender piece because this piece wasn't quite long enough to get to the proper range of motion. So this piece, I think, is a three-quarter inch pipe. Let me just look and see on the, uh, uh, no, it's a one inch pipe, Never mind. So, one inch pipe, which is actually the same size as a, a regular squat bar, you know, so it's, it's perfect, uh, perfectly matching on that one. And an end cap right here. So, this end cap is another um, one inch here, and then goes down to a, um, a smaller piece right here. That keeps the bar, obviously, from sliding off. So this is, like I said, freely moving, and it's just duplicated here on the other side. So to kind of give you a rundown of the equipment needed for building this, this is uh, two T-junctions that are one and a quarter. I've got um, a couple of uh, well, other pieces here. What did I do here? Yeah, that's one, another one and a quarter. So it's another one and a quarter coupling. A one and a quarter T-junction right here, a one inch bar, and then a one inch to a half inch uh, stopper at the end to keep the bar from sliding and uh, I'll actually uh, write down all this stuff for you so here if you're interested in making something like this yourself the price is very very reasonable <clears throat> and uh, the only kind of hitch and the only professional color you will need to get are for the bottom here um, barring that if you don't want to do that because regular spring colors will just slide around on that bar they're not quite big enough to fit on the end but uh, I've also used little spring clips that are like a buck forty nine at the hardware store too those worked really well for this, and uh, they kept the weight from moving uh, just as well as a regular collar did. So if you're looking for a cheapo homemade alternative to a regular collar that costs like 30 40 bucks, just those regular spring collars, and I'll show you that here as well. So this is the collar I was talking about. This is just a 2-inch spring clamp, and uh, very, very simple. Like I said, it's like a buck fifty at the hardware store. Instead of a collar, you just clip that right on there, and it acts like a collar. So it's very, very good in that respect. Very, very cheap. This plumbing pipe is uh, very, very reasonably priced too. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it was around 30 to 40 bucks for all the pipe for this whole piece of equipment. So, if you're interested, this is definitely a great piece of equipment for doing Anderson squats and uh, bottom start squats. So you can squat in full safety without having to worry about re-racking a bar. Um, if you have a you squat at home and you don't have a rack, perfect alternative. It allows you to do heavy squats. And I loaded this up to about 400 pounds. It's just 225 on here right now, and uh, yeah, you can really, really push yourself because you don't have to re-rack, you don't have to stand up, you're finishing at the bottom. Um, you can adjust these for range of motion um, if you want to increase the range. If you've never done bottom start squats, this is excellent for building power out of the bottom. So um, I'm going to show you a higher rep set with this, and I'm going to show you some heavier stuff here as well. All right, now quick side note, I generally don't wear gloves when I train, however, in this case, I actually do recommend them because that P90 
piece on the end there is kind of loose and it's out where you're gripping. If you're not wearing gloves, you could potentially uh, get the, your hands pinched if the bar kind of shifts over a little bit. So I'm just wearing like a regular, regular pair of gardening slash work gloves. Um, regular training gloves will be fine too. This, <laughs> mad scientist, what am I talking about? So this is going to be a high rep set done with about 225 here on the load. So here's the next set. I've added 100 pounds to the bar here. Now basically, one important thing to note when you're doing this is you want to make sure you're adding even plates to both sides. So I put 25s on every single of the four corners and uh, that keeps the bar evenly loaded. So this works out to probably about 328 pounds on the bar here. And uh, you'll be able to see this bar can take it no problem. So, so get your hands hooked up on here. Our placement is the same. So this bar also works quite well for front squats and for zercher squats. Um, <clears throat> basically the setup exactly the same, obviously you need a bit lighter weight when you do this, but you're going to duck underneath and get into position either with the cross grip or the clean grip and just do the exercise from there. Now similar to with the back squat, because the weight kind of shifts forward because of the vertical arms, it will put more attention on your quad. So it's a great alternative to the regular front squat in that department. And it does put even more tension on the frontal core supporting muscles as well. And now in terms of zercher squats, because the bar is already this high up, um, unless you are standing up on something or unless you lower the level here, it's just going to be a partial range of motion, but it's still very effective. So same position, only this time arms like this. You want to keep your palms flat so your forearm bones are held horizontally, so the bar sits horizontally, rather than if you're doing like this, it's just going to sit on one bone when you turn like this sits on both bones. So get yourself in position, get that bar right up and close to your stomach, and then and that is a dessert. <laughs> And that is a Zercher squat partial range of motion using this Anderson squat bar. So that is my Mad Scientist homemade Anderson squat bar. This is a great piece of equipment that you can make for very cheap with a simple plumbing uh, gear that you find at the hardware store. So if you're interested, I will have the full specs of this thing as well as how to put it all together down below here. But uh, make sure when you're doing this, and this is important, that you're keeping your balance when you're doing this lifting. The uh, balance on this piece of equipment is a lot different than having a bar on your back. There's a lot more swinging involved. These arms move freely, so um, be very, very careful when you're doing this. Um, the good thing about this is you won't get stuck at the bottom because you're already starting at the bottom. So in that respect, you're going to have a lot more um, safety built in rather than if you were doing squats freestanding. If you decide to make one of your own, 
I would love to see pictures of it, so definitely hit me up if you do, and uh, let me know how you like it.